Ang tutuking programa, mito ringan niyang Rated PG. Kailangan ing patnube at gabeding pengari para karing kaya nakan amanalbe. Once said that self is like a sea, boundless and measureless. The vision of our past and present judgments with our vision of the future is essential in finding deeper meaning of our lives. With the myriad beauty and nostalgia that awaits you here in Baler, you will surely awaken to a perspective towards the refinement of your lives. Join us in our journey, overflowing with nature, time, and high spirits. This is Balor Aurora Province. Beautiful, boundless. Hello humans, I'm with Ms. L. Ilovita Messina, the administrator of Aurora Polytechnic College to tell us something about the history of Balor and the culture in this beautiful place. Hello po, Tita Vita. Hello. Po kayo? <laughs> oh, I'm glad to meet you. So, uh, can you tell us something about the history of Balor? Oh, Baler is known throughout the Philippines because of President Quezon. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if you meet somebody and you say you are from Baler, they will immediately ask, how are you related to Quezon? Because Baler initially was known for President Quezon. Mm -hmm. okay. But recently, Baler became known again because of Senator Edgar de J. Angara. Mm -hmm. okay. These two people, this, they are the sons of Baler who made good you will consider them as a, a bo boys from a small town who make it big in the city. Ha? Kasi sumikat sila. Lalo nakilala sila. Pareho sila naging presidente. Si Che Quezon ay president ng Commonwealth of the Philippines. Si Senator Angara ay president ng UP, University of the Philippines. Pareho sila na mayroong ibinigay na pangalan sa bayan ng Baler. Ha? Si President Quezon, itinalaga niya ay nagkaroon siya ng pangarap na ang Baler ay maging isang dream town. Ngayon, yung dream town ni Quezon na yun ay yung, mayan, yung barangay ng reserva where nandun yung bahay ni Freddy Senator Angara. Mayroon yung master plan na tulad ng Quezon City. Yung master, yung gumawa ng, ng architect ng design ng Quezon City was the same guy who designed yung dream town ni Quezon sa reserva. Okay, si Senator Angara naman sa pagiging senador niya, ginawa niyang isang katotohanan ang pangarap ni Quezon na maging isang model and ideal town. Yun. Kaya lahat ng ginagawa niya rito ay di ang kanyang development program dito ay para isa katuparan ang pangarap ni Quezon para sa mga. And if you have gone to the park, you will notice there na mayroong isang rebulto na nakaupo. That was that is President Quezon. Si Senator Angara ang nagpagawa nito. Nakita niya ang model noon sa sa Europe. Tapos pinatulad niya sa isang sikat na sculpture pinagawa niya dito. Tapos yun, rebulto yun, binati ako ng National Historical Institute. Bakit daw nakaupo si Quezon? ay ang standard daw sa rebulto ng pinagpapagawa ng sikat na tao nakatayo o nagkaupo at nagsusulat. Ah, yun daw ang standard. Bakit na ay iba? Sabi ko sa kandu sa nakakuha ng National Historical Institute, sabi ko, ang ibig sabihin yan kasi yung bayan ng Baler, ang yung Baler, Baler came from the word Baler. Ethnic word ng mga original people of Baler, which are the, who are the Dumagats, the Aitas. And they call Baler, Baler. And the meaning of that is sa kanila, yun, kasi niya, ang mga alta, numadik yan, kalakad-lakad. But they will come home to Baler. Baler. Every time that, maski saan sila pumunta, kasi mga numadik sila, uuwi sila sa Baler. So, Carmen Guerrero Nakwil gave a meaning to that Baler, a place to come home to. 
Yun. So ngayon, sabi ko, yung rebulto ni Quezon is rebulto ng si Quezon ay umuwi na sa kanyang bayan. Nakaupo siya at nagpapahingalay para masaksihan niya ano ang nangyayari sa kanyang bayan. Yun. So, you mentioned uh, for the President Quezon and mm-hmm. the late Senator mm-hmm. Ricardo Aguilar. Uh, Ulan po mula natin si President Quezon. Ano po ba yung biggest contribution niya sa bayan? Alam mo, sabi nung ang pangalan ng baler ay nung sabi nila, it's the forgotten town of baler. Kasi para, yun, yun ang perception ng mga tao na pinabayaan kasi talagang yung bayan ng baler ay hindi masyadong pinaulag ni Quezon. In the sense that he binuhusan niya na ng, ng panahon niya sa bagay ka sa daling panahon ng anak niya. Pero alam mo, si Quezon had a selfish one sa baler. Gusto niya kanya kanil sa tiga baler lang ang baler, ayaw niya madating ng dayuhan, ayaw niya makuha. So, uh, initially, President Quezon did not want to have an easy access to baler. Kasi sabi niya, sa ganda ng bayan ko, pag nakita ito ng mga tagalabas, pipilitin nilang manirahan dit maagaw sa mga kababayan ko. So, yun ang unselfish motive niya. But, ganun man ang, ang feeling niya, ang ginawa ni President Quezon, he made sure na ang bayan ng Baler ay pinakadastro niya. At saka ang mga mamamayang tiga Baler, binabigyan niya ng 24 hectares ay homestead. Mayroon silang rice land. Mayroon silang residential lot sa bayan. Ang original na tiga Baler, ang kanang status ay is mga pamilyang may sariling lupa, may sariling sinasakan lupa, may sariling inaanyang. So, ganun niya po oh, oh. Na, na, ganun niya sila sa ganun niya sila inaruga Yo. kaya ang mga tig- ah, pero ang kulang sa, sa baler noon wala pa magagandang eskwelahan ang tiga baler para makapag-aral you have to go to Nueva Ecija or to Infanta from grade 4 hanggang grade 4 ka lang dito it was Mrs. Quezon who agitated na sinabi niyang buksan mo ang karsada ng baler para makalabas ang tiga baler Otherwise, kasi ang pwede ka lang lumabas ay nakakabayo ka, maglalakad ka. Ngayon, sabi ni President Quezon, oh, sa, nung pinipilit niyang buksan yung karsada ng baler, 1934 hanggang 1938 pinagagawa yan, ay Aurora sa karsada mo yan. Why? Kasi talagang if you have gone past to the throat, matarik, ma, mataas ang bangin, malalim, delikado. So, kaya sinabi niya gano'n. Hindi niya inisip na siya ay guwag. Pero ironically, nangyari nga ng mga inambus siya, ng bandido. Okay, so parang prophetic. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nevertheless, pagbubukas ng karsada ng baler, double coin yun. Nakapasok ang dayuhan, nakalabas naman ang tiga baler. Nakapal- At isa na sa si Senator Angaran, grade 6 pa lang siya lumabas na siya sa bal- ng baler sa may bila na siya nag-aral. Nagbalik siya dito, nakagraduate na siya ng law. No, nakagraduate na siya 1958. Doon siya, nag- na, doon lang siya nakahalubilo ng mga kababa, kabataan tiga baler. Tapos umalis na naman siya ulit. Tapos na, doon na siya, na, doon na siya nagkaroon ng buhay outside po. Well, kailan na lang siya nakabalik dito? But then, by that time, mayroon na siyang master plan ng ano ang gagawin niya kung siya ay maging presidente ng Pilipinas. So, hindi siya nakapag-presidente, hindi, hindi siya lumabas na vice president. Yung kanyang national plan na yun, from the macro plan, ginawa niya ang micro plan niya at ginawa niya rin sa mga. Yung, yung last two years niya, kaya lumawa siya rito ng maraming development program lahat ng makikita mo sa baler because of him. So, it seems yung mga prominent people from baler, kapag maalis sila dito sa bayan, babalik sila. Oh, yes. Ano kung pang meron sa culture ng baler at gives them? Ay, yung siguro, ewan ko, basta yun na kasi Carmen Guerrero na kapilaan nagkuhan na sinabi niya doon sa may baby. Nakakalabay doon ay a place to come home to. So, Maski sa ang makarating sa akong saan sulok ng magpipilit kang umuwi sa balik. Senator Angga, ano po ba yung gaan po makalaki yung naiambag niya sa pag, uh, 
progress of your mind. I would say na lahat ng mga mababa sa major improvements ng baler siya, yan lang karsada ng baler. Si Mrs. Quezon siya nag-open yung baler, gave access to a third baler, a third three balerinos na makalabas na mas. Yung baler, ano na? Pagkatapos si Kuan naman ang hirap ng karsada niya ng araw. Kasi napakakaitot yan. Kaunting baulan lang, may slide, hindi ka basta yun. Tapos mga ilog, walang tulay. Yung lahat na yun, inilagay ni si lahat ng mga obstacles na yun, inilagay dito ni Senator Angkar. Pag mag-travel ka, siguro nakarating naman kayo, pumunta pa kayo sa kasiguran. Napakaganda ng kong gawa. Balik po muna tayo sa uh, during the past times. Ano po ba yung, paano po ba yung buhay dito nun sa Baler? Um, before the before these changes po. Ang mga tiga Baler, ano, by nature, mahilig magpaaral ng anak. Talagang gusto dito ng tiga Baler mag-aaral ang mga anak. Kaya ang mga tiga Baler, dati nga, di ba sabi ko, binigyan sila ng 24 hectare na mga yes. to develop. Na-convert nila itong kokolan because talaga sabi ni Quezon, pataniman nyo ng coconut. And then may rice lang sila. Pero na mag-umpisa magpaaral ang tiga baler, nagpapagbili yan, lupang yan. Unti-unting ipinagbili. Nabili ng mga migrant sa baler. Una-una ng mga nakapamili rito ng lupa, mga batang din. Mga igorot. Ngayon, maliliit na lang ang lupa na tiga baler. So, uh, punta naman po tayo sa mga facts. Can you give us three interesting facts about baler po? Oh, ang baler nag-feature sa mga kasaysayan ng Pilipinas. Mm-hmm. Okay, na yung during the Philippine Revolution, yung ating Philippines Friendship Day na declaration. O oh, kasi ang Pilipinas ay naging the last bastion of the Spanish regime in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Ayun, kaya the feature yan. At yung istoryang yun, you know what? na-realize lang ni Senator because I told him. Kasi ang nakalagay dun sa libro lang, nakalagay lang sa libro ay The Last Bastion pag nakita mo history book. Ngayon, na-research ko dito yung istorya ng mga katiponerong lumaban dito na nagkubong sa mga Kastila. And you know what he did? Isa-isa niyang pinuntahan sa Spain yung mga uh, survivor ng mga Kastila kinunod. 33 of them, dinalaw niya ang mga bayan-bayan sa Spain and out of that he crafted a law that we are declaring that yung Philippine Spanish Friendship Day, June 30. Yun ang istorya ng batas na yun. Kasi sabi niya, that sabi niya ang ganda pala ng kasaysayan ng Pilipinas second, nung Second World War. Ang Pilipinas din ay naging daan ng mga armas, ano na Pilipinas, ang baler ng armas na ginagamit ng mga Julia against the Japanese. Yung, yung pagpasok dito ng dalawang barko ng Amerikano. Yung yan, yan din bumabagsak sa Gibbon. Nag-feature siya sa Second World War, nag-feature siya sa Pilipin-Pilipin-Spanish Revolution, and second, sinilang si Quezon dito. And lang ngayon, eh, pang-apat, sinilang dito si Senator Agdala. At Anytime Fitness, our tagline is get to a healthier place. Our priority is to get you feeling healthy from the inside. And that's when your physical form comes next. At Anytime Fitness, everyone is welcome. At Anytime Fitness, we give you three promises. A convenient gym, a set of personable staff, and getting people of all fitness levels get to a healthier place. So we're inviting everyone to come check out our gym. We're located at the 3rd floor of New Point Mall, Angeles and 3rd floor Vista Mall, San Fernando, Pampanga. Come and join the Purple Family! See you guys! What makes Clark your second home? Clark is my second home. I come here very often. Uh, feeling of safety here in Clark. Uh, the feeling of my big family. Having spoken to many of the employees each time I come, I realize that I have a responsibility. In the same way, it makes me feel at home here. I love it. I love the Philippines. Uh, 
Ayuman Steel Corporation is a roofing panel manufacturer uh, producing high quality product at very competitive price. So we are focused on providing quality roofing and trusses material with the highest level of customer satisfaction and cost efficiency. We will do everything we can to meet your expectations. We collaboratively work as one. We distribute the job of each uh, of employee. With this, we assure high level and quality materials that the uh, clients need. We demonstrate integrity in all our business conduct, uh, including dealing with fellow employees. Uh, this is essential in achieving the company success. We sell local and imported roofing panels like rib type, tile span, ridge cap, steel decking, span drill, and other construction materials. We are the company that is committed to delivering products and services that guarantee customer satisfaction. We may not be as big as other competitors in the industry, but we do partner with our customers in accomplishing their goal of having edify so reliable, safe, and sturdy. Welcome to the Artist's Village here in Di Casalarin, Balur, Aurora. This is more like a retreat house for the artists where they come together and learn from each other through workshops and actually some of their artworks are being housed in here. So come join me and let's see what's inside. I'm here with Sir Sherwin Gonzalez, one of the artists here in Balur, to have this interview with him. Sir Sherwin, can you tell us about uh, the kind of art that you do? The kind of art that I'm doing is called Tereptopism. So Tereptopism comes from the local term here in Baler we call it as Tereptep, where it means uh, using your finger to play with water and then as you play with water you can form these little ripples. Mm. And these little ripples when they combine they will form a, a far more different pattern from the other ripples. Tereptopism simply means the art of influence. Okay. We believe that our art or the art of today is a product of different influences. There's no purist art right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And since Filipinos are the first to experience that during the Galleon trade, mm -hmm. we believe this is our art. Why? Because during the Galleon trade, you are, we are exposed between the East and West because this is the center of uh, what we call the hub. Yes. Uh, that's, we are the first internet hub once upon a time <laughs> okay. during the Gaian trade uh, because the, the product from China or the culture of China and also the culture of uh, what we call then as New Spain or Mexico mm -hmm. will, be, uh, will come uh, through the Philippines. So mm -hmm. we have this kind of art, this art, a product of the different influences. And since art is the soul of the culture, actually this is what uh, art for me. This is the soul I, I love of the that. culture. This is the soul of the culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it represents who we are, this is our identity, this is who we are. Mm -hmm. It's not merely just our psychology as a person because sometimes mm -hmm. they believe that ah, this is my art, this is the product of me, mm -hmm. but in the back of you, you don't just, as an artist, you don't just represent your pers persona or who you are, but yes. you represent the whole uh, culture or where you are in. Yes. So, so that, that is our art. I was immersed in this culture and this culture is the one that I represent in my art 
and suddenly this culture is a combination of different yeah, culture. Right. It's just a like now. composition of the different cultures. Yeah. So that's why we can say that Filipinos are multifaceted. Yeah. Y yung art natin is heavily influenced by a lot of culture. So it's really a brand new thing, no? If you're going to mix all of that, what do other people tell you when they see your art? Actually, when I say them that it's terapeutism, sometimes they laugh. At, they laugh at me. And what? Why would you? Uh, yeah. Uh, if you you have an ism, they need to pass to academic standard. Okay. So, so what would I say about academic standard? I call my art as terapeutism. It's 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 me who called it that mm -hmm. way because I believe that it is a combination of different culture, a combination of different influence. So that's what's coming out on my uh, on my. Uh, of my pen or on my brush. Yes. So, and uh, I don't care if they, they want to have it to be academically accepted. No, uh, you're not the one. They're not the one that does define my art. But uh, sometimes uh, some people actually, I get a very good impression of my art because uh, most probably it's on the skills because mm -hmm. I'm experienced winning different uh, competition yeah, and okay. exposing to different parts of the world and exhibiting and even here in Asia and also in Europe so and even in America. So uh, exhibits or competitions uh, in other countries outside the Philippines? Ah yeah yeah I, I wow. joined some ex I joined exhibits um, outside the Philippines um, mm -hmm. for example in New York I wow. experienced a group I exhibit there at uh, the Chelsea district mm -hmm. and in Europe I have uh, actually I, uh, I have there uh, a group exhibit and also uh, a solo exhibit in different parts of Europe and uh, the, the best for me actually the most inspiring exhibit that I experienced is when I exhibited at Palazzo de Medici where is that? Uh, that was in Flo that's in Florence, Italy. Oh wow! Uh, the, Pala mm -hmm. the Palazzo de Medici. If if you're familiar with that, the, the, the Medici's are the patrons mm -hmm. of Michelangelo, mm -hmm. of Leonardo da Vinci, Donatello, and this uh, uh, this what we call gods of art. <laughs> we call them the <laughs> gods of art, the masters of masters. The masters uh, uh, he he is the they are the patron. Mm -hmm. So they're the one who really molded art. And create, uh, they're the one. That, uh, the art that we are experiencing today, it was born. Okay. And having been that in that setting, what uh, can you say when you were there? What was our edge in comparison with the rest of the ex exhibit art that were exhibited during that time? Actually, ano nakita mong lumitaw hmm. that you represented through your art? There? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, it's uh, the, the reason I, I answered you. That I told you that I, insp I was inspired when exhibited because. Uh, let's let's face it. That's the, that's the makeup of artists. Yes. Uh, that's the makeup art. And also, I experienced uh, mingling with other art okay. artists who had uh, solo exhibit. And as I noticed, we're not far. We're not that far behind. Oh my god! Uh, yes. Actually, uh, on the uh, when I exhibited in New York, I have some advantages uh, because um, I had discovered that uh, they, uh, we have what we called as. Uh, internationally accepted colors, okay. internationally accepted color. I discovered that when I was working, uh, was, I was commissioned by Raffles to do. Uh, if you're familiar with Raffle Hotel in yes. Makati, yeah. Makati. Uh, so the one who's in charge with the with the paintings and how the paintings will go on has this magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is our international magazine that are only given to masters, ar master artists, mm -hmm. international designers, and this is the guide for colors. Uh -huh. uh, they have their the colors for the next uh, 10 years that will be used oh, by uh, kind of standard like that uh, yeah yeah that so there's a, they, we have this standard color I went to, it to 2014 so I, I, I asked uh, what's the standard the color of 2014 then I used that color uh, oh. and 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 those uh, artists there I have the same colors with the master artist oh wow so that's already uh, given you the advantage yeah so they were amazed why is this artist from uh, from from the Philippines has this uh, ha has the uh, know the uh, this the standard yes. colors because that uh, that's the that's a secret <laughs> code. <laughs> but uh, that's uh, how uh, uh, resourceful we are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we know how to get but later I had discovered for you to to know that the pattern of the color because we're so behind by five years. Really. The Philippines. In terms uh, of art. of that co that the, the, the color. The okay. color, the understanding of color. Our interior designers, I don't know that uh, our architect, they were behind by like five years because what happened is, we we try to adapt 
the the western colors, mm -hmm. and then uh, after uh, we, but we all we are late because we uh, th that's then, already then the using it. Obsolete already. Absolutely already. already. Like yeah, okay, and so better. but this there's a technique. Okay. You want to know? Yes. Very simple. <laughs> Look at the colors of Gucci. Look oh, they're the headsetters. The, yeah. <laughs> Look at, at the colors of those bags that Louis. are very yeah, Louis okay. Vuitton. So uh, their colors. Look so at the they colors. Set the stage they they are the, the next next standard. color. They're the standard colors. They're of the year. They're, they have the color of the year. You want to know the color of the year? You look at those designers' product. You look at their product. So again. I can see that you're really uh, ahead of your game. I, ahead of most of other people in terms of what you're doing as an artist. So how do you see yourself now, um, a few years from now? What kind of... Are, are you going to evolve from Taraptivism or are you going to embrace it more fully and then develop a new you know, new techniques or okay. whatever. Mm -hmm. So, um, Tarotism is, is a very, very unique ism. Why? Mm -hmm. Because, uh, ter as you can see, it is formed in water. Mm -hmm. And water is fluid. It keeps on evolving. Okay. It depends. Uh, you can make, uh, create different shapes or different patterns on the way you uh, dip your fingers in the water. Mm -hmm. So, yes. that's the reason why it's very fluid. It keeps on, keep on evolving. Mm -hmm. So, uh, my art will really keep on evolving because of that wow. because as I will be exposed to different kinds of influence yes. there will be changes in my art mm -hmm. just like how water is exposed to, to, to those different pressure it will have a different pattern yes. so it will keep on evolving you know it what will. comes to my mind right now is that you're boundless your art yes. is boundless yes. so That's true. it can take in many forms and I'm so happy hearing this that we have a son of Baler you know, the son of Baler who's into it and uh, you, you are leading the game so we're very proud of you so thank you so much sir Sherwin uh, thank you very much at anytime fitness our tagline is get to a healthier place our priority is to get you feeling healthy from the inside and that's when your physical form comes next at anytime fitness Everyone is welcome. At Anytime Fitness, we give you three promises. A convenient gym, a set of personable staff, and getting people of all fitness levels get to a healthier place. So we're inviting everyone to come check out our gym. We're located at the 3rd floor of New Point Mall, Angeles, and 3rd floor Vista Mall, San Fernando, Pampanga. Come and join the Purple Family! See you guys! What makes Clark your second home? Clark is my second home. I come here very often. Uh, feeling of safety here in Clark, uh, the feeling of my big family. Having spoken to many of the employees each time I come, I realise that I have a responsibility. In the same way, it makes me feel at home here. Yeah. I love it. I love the Philippines.
Welcome to another episode of Foodie Bay. So, nandito po tayo ngayon sa Costa Pacifica and I'm now here with uh, Chef Ronald Marantal, the head chef dito sa Costa Pacifica. So, ngayon, uh, mahinain sa atin si Chef na mga best sellers na I think you should try dito sa uh, when you visit Baler and when you visit Costa Pacifica. Let's start off with the breakfast meals po, no? So, we have here yung longganisa de Baler. So, longganisa de Baler. Let's try this, no? So, kung gusto nyong kumain ng breakfast at mahilig kayo sa longganisa, try nyo yung longganisa de Baler. Mmm! Ang sarap, chef, ah. Iba. Yung, yung asin niya, very distinct. Next one is yung... Ano to, chef? Beef tapa. Okay, yung normal... Siyempre, alam naman natin yung normal beef tapa, di ba? But what's... what's ano yung kakaiba dito? Yung beef tapa namin, kami na po mismo. I see. Bali, Chef, ano, uh, kayo talaga yung nagtimpla niyan. Sige nga, Chef, tikman natin. <laughs> mm, gusto ko yung, ano, Chef, gusto ko yung, la yung lasa ng beef tapa. Yung regular kasi na beef tapa na natitikman ko, um, parang maalat lang siya. But this time, yung beef tapa po ninyo, medyo... More may, garlic. Exactly, more on garlic. Tapos medyo may sweetness factor siya. Yes. Which is... I think magugusan ng mga kapwa nating Filipino. <laughs> then next one, lastly, last but not the least sa ating breakfast is Biniklad yung What's that? Sorry po. Biniklad na lilis. We call it biniklad. Ah, biniklad. Oh, oh so an sa anong word po yung biniklad? Dito po. Ah. So ibig sabihin pala ng biniklad, binuksan, biniyak. Bin biniyak. <laughs> All right, sige, tikman po natin yung biniklad na dilis. So uh, basically it's an open uh, small fish yung yeah. dilis. Mmm, crunchy chef ah. Ang sarap. Ma ano, tama-tama yung pagkaluto niya talaga yung crunchiness nandun. Kasi di ba, yung ibang dilis, parang overcooked or undercooked na. Pero ito, ano, sobrang malutong. Hindi siya ganun kaalat. Exactly, hindi rin siya ganun kaalat actually. Yun nga rin po yung sasabihin ko. <laughs> Kaya masarap po siya. I'm sure magugustahan po. Ito po yung sa mga best seller na sa breakfast. Wow. Okay, so... There you have it, guys. Yun po yung three best sellers sa ating breakfast food dito sa Costa Pacifica. We have the uh, longganisa de Valer. We have the tapa. And then we have the biniklad. Now, let's move on to the main dishes dito sa na sinaserve po ng Costa Pacifica. Let's start off with the appetizer. So, what's this po? Can you... Kilawin tuna. Kilawin tuna. So, kilawin means hindi siya niluto, di ba? Niluto siya sa vinegar. Vinegar, okay. So, this is actually fresh tuna na walang luto. <laughs> hindi siya dumaan sa apoy. Talagang uh, cooked lang siya by vinegar. Alright, let's take it. Chef, ang sarap. Pwede na iuwi ko na. <laughs> ang sarap, Chef. <laughs> ang sarap po niya. Actually, I'm gonna get another one. Tapos, kaya siya may salt sa gilid. Kung gusto po natin ng additional... Yes. I'm gonna add in a little bit of salt. Yes, actually, yung ginagamit nyo yung Himalayas pink, pink salt, no? Alright, so, nilagyan nyo rin po ng... Chili. So, yung salt po na to, may, may anghang siya. Oh, okay. Sarap siya? The best. Guys, Punta na kayo sa Costa Pacifica. Kilawin na tuna. Alright? Next one. Ano ito, Chef? Ito po yung famous color na Alright. pako. Alright? Pako? Sa local fern. Uh, abundant siya sa baler. Marami, marami siya. So, ito yung talagang hinahanap ng mga tao kapag yes. pupunta ka sa baler. So, blinance okay. lang yung, yung pako. Then, you add in some tomatoes, cucumber, salted egg. And then, of course, itong... Bagong. Bago. Is bagong na isda, right? Yes. Tigman natin, chef, ha? Yan po yung traditional way na pag-prepare ng mga local ng baler is pako salad. Ooh. Pwede rin natin siyang i-prepare na hilaw lang yung pako. Hindi na siya Ah, so hindi na iba-blanch. But this time, what you did is nag-blanch po kayo ng pako. Okay. Let's taste it. So again, it has a fish sauce. Diba? Yung... Bagoong pala. Mm. Ang sarap. 
yung nagustuhan ko dito, chef, yung pako. Kasi diba, ang mga gulay, pag over, pag blinan siya, minsan na uh, sobrang naluluto. So, talagang dinamp nyo lang po ba siya? Diretso sa uh, ice water. That's, that's the thing. Now I know bakit ito yung hinahanap-hanap talaga ng mga, <laughs> ng mga turista dito sa, sa Baler. Alright, so, okay, moving on. This one, chef, dito na tayo sa main, uh, main courses. No? So, ano to, chef? Ito yung Pansit Baler natin. Pansit Baler, okay. One of the best <laughs> Ang mga Filipino po kasi mahilig sa Pansit. Mm. So, I think you guys should try this. Ito ang Pansit Baler. Ito yung isa sa Baler version. Bakit? Ano yung pagkakaiba niya sa other pansit, chef? Lalo meron pag river prawns and bagno. Okay, so that's why. Kaya po siya special uh, made from Baler. Kasi again, meron po siyang pako na locally from uh, Baler. Or sikat dito sa Baler yung pako. And then meron kasi siyang hipon or prawns at yung bagnet or yung crispy pork. Tama. So, Siyempre, hindi natin papalagpasin. Kailangan natin i-try. Alright, we're gonna try first yung pancit. Mm. Chef, malamis namin siya, no? Ang sarap! So, ano, ano po yun? May nilagay po kayong sauce? Or just the pako or ingredients na nag-make it kind of sweet? Meron din special sauce na ginagawa. That's why, that's why. Kasi parang ano eh, parang ano po siya, chef eh. Um, Normally kasi yung pansit, di ba, medyo maalat na ano. Ito, chef, parang manamis-namis siya na may sipa pa rin ang ano. No, yun nga po eh, sarap. Yan, so meron tayong drink, chef. Ano po ito? Cucumber. Cucumber, okay. And then this one? Pineapple. Pineapple. <laughs> And watermelon. Watermelon. Wow, chef. Ang dami nating masasarap na drinks na pwedeng i-order dito sa Costa Pacifica. So guys, marami pa pong flavors that you can ask, uh, you can buy here in Costa Pacifica. But these are the three of the best sellers na drinks that you can order here in Costa Pacifica. So chef, pizza. Ano yung kakaiba nitong pizza po na to? Kakaiba po sa pizza natin, pinaloon po siya natin ng local flavors, which is the uh, color longganisa. Ah! Then, niluto po siya sa pugon, wood fire pugon talaga. Mmm! Ang sarap ng ano niyo po, chef, ng, ng dough niyo. Kayo rin po gumawa ng dough? Yes. Wow! Tapos yung... Uh, yes! Uh, yung, ba, yung pagkakagat mo pa lang, alam mo na na fresh yung ano eh. Yung, kung gusto nyo malaman yung tinutukoy ko sa <laughs> freshness ng dough ni chef, tikman niyo po siya. So, okay. So, dito po tayo, no? Ano po ito, chef? Can you tell us what's this, what this is? Grilled tuna rin siya. Grilled tuna? Grilled tuna. Sa, sa seafoods actually. Mayaman ang baler sa seafoods kasi malapit lang sa, sa dagat. So, ito ay... So, wow! Nice! Na, nicely moistured. Chef ah. <laughs> ang ganda po ng, ng ano niya. Perfect. Sarap. Costa Pacifica has really a lot to offer. So, uh, besides the cozy and comfortable and elegant room to stay in, meron din silang masasarap na dishes that they serve. And chef, please invite invite them to visit Costa Pacifica and kumain dito sa restaurant. Yes, uh, Iimbitahan ko po kayo lahat para i-try po yung Costa Pacifica and matikman niyo po yung exactly. in-offer namin. We invite you to taste the specialties ng Baler. Mahirap yung sa TV lang. <laughs> so again, I'm your food bay, Brad, and this is Kevlar. At Anytime Fitness, our tagline is get to a healthier place. Our priority is to get you feeling healthy from the inside, and that's when your physical form comes next. At Anytime Fitness, everyone is welcome. At Anytime Fitness, we give you three promises. A convenient gym, a set of personable staff, and getting people of all fitness levels get to a healthier place. 
So we're inviting everyone to come check out our gym. We're located at the third floor of New Point Mall, Angeles, and third floor Vista Mall, San Fernando, Pampanga. Come and join the Purple Family. See you guys. What makes Clark your second home? Clark is my second home. I come here very often. Uh, feeling of safety here in Clark. Uh, the feeling of my big family. Having spoken to many of the employees each time I come, I realize that I have a responsibility. In the same way, it makes me feel at home here. Yeah. I love it. I love the Philippines. For many years, you taught a lot of people how to love themselves. And uh, the first time I, I met you, then immediately I know that you are teaching yoga, meditation. But what really is your art, Archie? Yeah, it's the art of living. Uh, yoga is a vehicle to express that. I started a while back in the US, San Francisco area, when my sister a couple of friends wanted to help the youths after school program in San Francisco. We created a foundation called Integral Living Society. And my job uh, as one of the founder is to find teachers in different forms. Music teacher, uh, Tai Chi, Qigong, drumming, art, and yoga shows up. And so I look for teachers. I start calling some of my friends who practice yoga at that particular time. And <clears throat> I talked to the director of Integral Yoga Institute in San Francisco and that's how it started. He said, you have to talk to Mitch. That's his American name. Mm -hmm. And they have uh, a spiritual name. His name is Aso Ashoka. And said, you have to call him up. And so I did. <laughs> and he became my teacher. And then he told me, he's like, how can you promote yoga to all these children if you don't really know what it feels like? Yes. And if you don't know how to, it works. You can really share hard. what you do not have. Yeah, it's very hard to convey and mm -hmm. to convince. Uh, and so I start um, going to the studio, or they call it ashram. And uh, at the beginning, my body has a shock, right? Because I realize I have a short impatient pattern that I don't recognize. They teach not too slow, not too fast, but somewhere in the middle. It's a classic called Hatha Yoga mm -hmm. with Pranayama and meditation. First two class was a challenge because I did not realize I have a pattern of speed. Okay. I start to show up, meaning I start to have uh, a consciousness or mindfulness. I start to birth from this practice. Oh my God, so my breath is short. Oh my God, my mind is rushing and starting to have this, this, this birth of consciousness mm -hmm. uh, that I live in for a long time and I don't have. And so that's how I started. And, and I started looking at the clock when the teacher said, you know, close your eyes and listen. And I found myself, oh my God, this is too long. And this is frustrating. This is normal. That's the first time. Yes. Is, the, the first. Yes. yes. And and so I encourage the beginners when you're frustrated and you're impatient. This is all normal. Well, that was what I felt when we had this first breathing exercises. Yeah. It's so unnatural for me. Yes. Because I think for the longest time I I forgot what it meant to really breathe properly. Yeah. We we all naturally breathe when we are babies. Mm -hmm. We breathe from the belly, right? And as we go to school, they train us to be in our mind. And that's how we start to become a chest breather. And on the, on, the, on the chest is where the, what they call the reaction mind. Mm -hmm. The flight and fight. Flight and fight nerves mode, yes. Mode. And that's why when we are being attacked or we are being questioned about so-called personhood, 
and that's how we start to, to reposition ourselves. Either we attack or we retreat. And so when we deepen our breath, there's a lot of things we also have to unlearn. Okay. <laughs> so breathing is, the, is one thing that we need to relearn. What are the things that we need to unlearn? First, you have to notice what that is. Consciousness. Yeah, and, and because we have to first and foremost is to cultivate consciousness of witnessing. Witnessing is something that we have to first cultivate by learn to watch ourselves and others without judgment. That's really the teaching of yoga for me, is to learn that. When you and how learn, do you do that? First, you have to uh, learn how to breathe, right? There's a preparations, uh, so then you're not reacting to everything. I call it the neutral space. A neutral space is a place of non-reaction. And non-reaction is really, really attached to what's so-called personhood. But you think about who you are, you're just on a space of observation. And when you feel all of these things, you put them in a process, not just in your mind, but with your being. When you are witnessing and you're feeling, there is a natural intelligence shows up. I call it emotional thermometer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and all of this shows up, and I call it natural emotional intelligence and spiritual intelligence and logic. Mm -hmm. You filter all of those informations going inside and you observe. Okay. And you're not reacting. And when you observe all of these informations comes in, it tells you something what to do. And you're still watching. And I call them small mind, bigger mind. <laughs> yes. And infinite mind. And all of us just actually just sit in our brain, right? And ignore all of these things. I don't. I discover them all of this through meditation. What is the thing that actually drives us away from being conscious about ourselves? Noise. We in what ones? Ah, all this noise from the external world. Technology mm -hmm. is one of the noises. Is one. Also yourself, your own mind. Yes, I think I told you a while ago that the, the greatest enemy that we have actually is ourselves. Yeah. So what do you yeah. do now if you find out and realize that it's actually you putting yourself down? I think first is don't change. Don't change anything. Learn to sit first with your breath. Um, the master always say, you know, dive in into the ocean of yourself. What, what does that mean is just sit there quietly observe. Allow all these things rising and falling into your inner minds and don't judge. As soon as you see what's false and what's true, you don't even have to correct anything. There's an automatic deleting all these false. Oh, wow. Okay, and a lot of us don't know how to sit in this space. Yes, am I sitting properly? <laughs> they said they never cross our legs because it, it locks the energy, but it's just natural. So we can un unlock and sh <laughs> Freeing up ourselves. Yeah, there's has it's to be a natural flow. Not only to the energy, but also to the infinite. But understandably, Archie, because we have a lot of roles that we play in our lives. Yeah. And the tightness comes in in a lot of ways as well. Um, at the end, at the start of the day, middle of the day, even before you sleep, there's so many things that will make you worry. Now, that's one thing that I'd like to explore more with you. Mm -hmm. This, how, how do you really deal with, with worries in life? Yeah, when I worry, uh, start to tighten up, I, I start to say, oh, I'm worried. You recognize yeah, immediately what recognize. you feel. You have to recognize. Okay. Don't ever say, oh, this is wrong. Okay. Oh, this is not right. I should always be happy. Because all of these things are just a judgment. A recognition that we put it in a different boxes of our life. Uh, the mind does that a lot because its job, our mind, its job is to recognize what is dangerous and what's not. So this is just a category that we've learned over time by this human experience in this earth. But you have to understand this is just a projection sometimes. Mm -hmm. Some of them are just illusion. Okay. And so you have to learn what's real and what's not real. And the only way to do that is you have to learn how to witness, how to see things. And you only have to learn to see things and when you're calm and clear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do you become and calm and clear? This is where yoga and other practices come comes in. in yeah. You have to learn how to breathe and sit in that space of consciousness that is calm. 
Okay, this is, I call them wisdom now because I've been practicing them for many years. This is where the medicine of yoga comes in mm -mm, mm -mm. that I really truly appreciate, that I give in to myself. And so when I, as soon as I feel fear comes in and other people also in fear, the first thing I do is consciously breathe. Really? Really to break it? Right? I have to breathe first because I don't want to be contaminated because I cannot make a decision on the state of fear. And oftentimes, not just me, but I think it applies to most of most of us. When anger kicks in, the natural tendency for you is to really react. It depends on That's your conditioning. Why. Yeah. Because there's a pattern for all of us on how we react on situations. Mm -hmm. There's some other people just get mad and go and cry. Yeah. There's some people start to be violent and some people don't know and shock. So everybody have a unique conditioning on how we actually respond to these things and you should not worry about others you should worry about your own conditioning so then you can unlearn it mm -hmm. if it's not serving you okay and, and how do you know if it's serving you and not serving you is when it impedes to allow yourself to be a genius when you allow yourself not to be the best version of yourself when it shackles you to the space of just imprison you to all this energy that is not promoting growth, not yes. promoting elevation of your consciousness. Most people want to to escape and, 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 and leave without learning because it will come back again if you don't learn. This is what I said, be, be courageous with the situation because don't allow that energy to leave your body without first what have I learned. Okay. Because this journey for me, the way I, I see life, I don't see anything negative. Everything is just a challenge and a learning. So when that learning is within my body and I'm having a hard time, I witness first where it started, how it sits in my body, and how it affects my life. Oh, wow. And you achieve this because of years of practice. Yes, because the intention that I set to myself is about knowing myself. That intention is very important. To tell it in your subconscious mind, said, I want to know who I am. It doesn't matter how painful it is. It's just a state statement, right? It, it's a very brief statement. Know thyself. We forgot to ask these powerful questions. Absolutely. Because all of us are all longing for quick answers, quick solutions. Band aid solutions. And then it always we go back, so we go back to all these lessons and we go around in circles. And then suddenly, whoop, life is gone. Yes. I've just said no, I don't want anything quick. So what's your end goal in life, Archie? The end goal is have I done my best? <laughs> have I done everything I could, you know, in my best, in my best to show up and be available in this life? It's all about showing up really. And, and, and I think for me, if I showed up in every situation that I access the best version of myself, I show up spiritually, emotionally, geologically, and, and subconsciously, like all of these things of the unknown, of the spiritual that I brought in into this uh, human experience, I'm okay. And yeah, I left everything there. Uh, that's what my intent in this journey of this lifetime is to show up. What will be your message for, for all of us? How do we improve our day-to-day -day, yeah, day -day living? Because that's where we are right now, in the middle of the business of our lives. For me, life is perfect. There's no accident. You're here and I'm here for a reason. And give yourself a break. That uh, this image about that you're not perfect, that you are incomplete, you have to achieve all of these things is not true. You know, first of all, remove that. So then you don't deduct yourself to this, that you're preconceived, nothing. Yes, our preconceived beliefs and notions. You're very special. <laughs> that you're nothing. You are. We're working on a new Not awakened yet to that vision, that you are special. All of us are. And you carry a lot of wisdom that is still untapped, that's still not downloaded. <laughs> because into they the have, conscious yes, mind they have to be unlocked it's still explored. in the subconscious mm -mm. and to the unknown and to bring this into the physical experience consciously so we have to learn to prepare mm -mm. discipline ourselves uh, allow ourselves to be in the environment that is conducive for learning so you have to start letting go of all these negative thoughts negative people that are not contributing to, to 
this journey to reveal who you are. At Anytime Fitness, our tagline is Get to a Healthier Place. Our priority is to get you feeling healthy from the inside, and that's when your physical form comes next. At Anytime Fitness, everyone is welcome. At Anytime Fitness, we give you three promises. A convenient gym, a set of personable staff, and getting people of all fitness levels get to a healthier place. So we're inviting everyone to come check out our gym. We're located at the third floor of New Point Mall, Angeles, and third floor Vista Mall, San Fernando, Campanga. Come and join the Purple Family! See you guys! What makes Clark your second home? Clark is my second home. I come here very often. Uh, feeling of safety here in Clark. Uh, the feeling of my big family. Having spoken to many of the employees each time, I realize that I have a responsibility. In the same way, it makes me feel at home here. I love it. I love the Philippines. Our featured author of the week is E. Artel, and her book, The Fourth Piece, Orders Last Play, book number one. In 2022, there are humans and aliens, heroes and monsters, choices and prophecies, and four brothers with the power to choose what's left when the gods decide they're through playing games. The fourth piece is the story of three teenage brothers who learn that their background is not as normal as they had believed or hoped that it was, and what they discovered leaves them reeling in their sneakers. While the novel's genre is science fiction, there's enough normalcy to the story and the charming characters to entertain readers of all genres, not merely the sci-fi fans. The story is told from alternating points of view from each of the brothers, which adds interest and enhances the reader's experiences. with our Balor experience. So, Rad and Bianca, mm -hmm. what is that thing that made you feel boundless in this special place? Okay, I'll go first. Okay. My answer to that question is that Balor is boundless when it comes to nature's gifts. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you look, you will find breathtaking views that will surely help you appreciate God's creation. Yes. Oh gosh, I fall in love with the history of Balor and wow. hearing those stories, it feels like I am mining lots of gems. 
which made me richer than yesterday. So that makes me boundless. So really, there's no stopping the people here yeah. and this province from ever progressing because this is really boundless. They have so many potential. So I believe that Balur will surely be known elsewhere. Not just here in the Philippines, but it will overtake the entire world. Yes. I agree with you with that. I totally agree. Yes. Don't forget to send in your answers for hashtag question this yes. week. Which life experience made you realize that you are boundless? Mm -hmm. Exactly. You can send in your answers on our Facebook comment section. Mm -hmm. And of course, don't forget to include our official hashtag for this episode. Hashtag Boundless Baller. And of course, hashtag Traveler TV. We would like to thank Costa Pacifica for our food and accommodation while we are here in yeah, Baler. Thank you so much. And we would like to thank also Armando Heroy for so all much. of the necessary preparations to make this episode possible. With that, we leave you with boundless beauty and happiness. Happiness. And with that, I'm your adventure yeah. I'm Bianca, but you can call me Bito Short. And I'm Ayo Gutierrez. And this is for our Travel Arts TV. Travel Arts TV.